Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue aux 13h sur Canal 2 International. Good day, Henri Kedian. Yeah, good day, Junior Hussein. Thanks and welcome to join us on this edition of the Bilingual News on Canal 2 International. We'll begin with our top stories. Minister calls on Cameroonians to overcome fear, go for the coronavirus vaccine as the only means to fight out against the deadly virus. These are the benefits they say outweigh the risk. Mis à la disposition de l'Université de Ngarondere, le professeur titulaire Pascal Charlemagne Messanga Nyamdi explique dans ce journal le concept qu'il juge néfaste et plein de rancœur à son endroit. Accueilli en héros à l'université de Ngarondere, le professeur titulaire Messanga Nyamdi de droit fait de troubles, de troublantes révélations dans ce journal. An electricity sector regulatory agency gives ultimatum to a new for numerous shortcomings and abuses in the management of customers. The agency says a new should sit up or face the consequences. Those were our top stories. We'll be right back in a split second. Well, thanks and welcome to join us on this edition of the 1 p.m. Bilingual News. I'm Kejang Henry Atimbi. And of course, with you know, you see, you can get us on our Facebook page and on YouTube. Like got in our news headlines, the Minister of Public Health, Manauda Malachi, has called on Cameroonians to take the courage and go for the coronavirus or the vaccine. And so he was saying this as he launched the reception of the vaccine in Douala and, of course, the vaccination galore that is presently going on in Douala. More in details or more. In different ranks and files, administrative authorities in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, received the first dose of the anti-COVID vaccine. A crowd gathered at the Gainako Obstetric Hospital to witness the launch of the vaccination campaign in Douala, March 15, against a deadly disease. Medics presented a report on, on more persons suffering from respiratory problems and are being admitted in the hospital. The same report was presented at the Lankintini Hospital. The director of the Lankintini Hospital remains confident after receiving his first dose of the anti-COVID vaccine. He calls on all health personnel to do the same. Tant que personnel la santé et au front. Hard workers have been at the forefront of the disease. We are constantly in contact with sick persons and follow recommendations from a scientific commission. It is but normal for health personnel to be the first to be administered the vaccine. I have received my chart as an example for my colleagues. Among the crowd of beneficiaries are Chinese citizens resident in Douala. The vaccine is from my country. I'm confident I call on others to take the vaccine. The vaccines are being administered under the supervision of the Minister of Public Health who arrived to Allah for the official launch for the vaccination campaign. Their countries are already obliging persons to take the vaccine before they get into the country. The vaccine is important. Today we have received at least 400,000 doses of the vaccine. We also have donations worth 1,200 doses of the vaccine from the National Order of Doctors. We have equally placed a command of 4 million doses of the vaccine to arrive Cameroon in the days ahead. It should be noted the first consignments of the vaccines arrived Cameroon Sunday, March 11, as the country is battling with the surge of COVID-19 infections. Coming up is a report by the General Raquel Tandak on the importance or rather on the benefits of the coronavirus uh, vaccine, which she says outweighs the, the risk. Regina Lecker. 
The arrival of the Chinese fabricated Sinopharm vaccine in Cameroon has continued to generate diverse reactions. Some health experts believe the vaccine is timely given the increase in COVID-19 deaths. We need to protect uh, vulnerable persons. We have uh, the elders, we have uh, uh, health workers, we have people who have comorbid comorbidity. We need to protect them, so we need vaccine. But the issue of the vaccine has generated controversy as many Cameroonians continue to question the efficacy of the vaccines. I think these vaccines are safe. Maybe they are not, uh, the, the, the efficacy are not optimal, but I think they are, they are safe. Because we, when, they, we produce, when they produce vaccine, we put on balance the benefit and risk. And I think now the benefit of this vaccine is more important than, than risk. Formally snubbed by most African countries, lack of efficacy, some now say Cameron may be heading back to the AstraZeneca vaccine as many continue to cast doubt on the Chinese vaccine. But health practitioners say it is costly and has several side effects. Sinopharm especially was invented about four months after the pandemic by the Chinese. So it's really a very short time and more so the other vaccines too. Usually if you go through a clinical trial and you know the whole process to produce a vaccine is usually longer. And that's why people are very skeptical about the vaccines. Um, AstraZeneca is more effective but it's caused a lot of mortality, a lot of side effects. So uh, I think that's why the government went for Sinopharm. Medical experts have encouraged Cameroonians to give the vaccines a short noting that though not 100% efficient, the benefits outweigh the risk. And we move over to Bafia. That is in the central region where schools have been disinfected as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the disinfection took place under the watchful eyes of the students as they were being drilled on barrier measures. Maureen D. reports. Schools, just like in other highly congested areas, remain a fatal ground for the easy spread of COVID-19. To protect children, there is need for constant disinfection of classrooms and campuses. Bokito subdivision has stepped up the fight in schools with an objective of zero contamination and dirt linked to COVID-19. The disinfection exercise is being supervised by the mayor of Bokito. It's a special operation which entails disinfecting classrooms and completely rolling back COVID-19 from our area. Up to now, Bokito is free from the disease. Besides classrooms, buildings were also involved. At a distance, children watch the disinfection exercise, a way of telling them COVID is real. They must protect themselves. The divisional officer sees the opportunity to sensitize the population on the second wave, which is more deadly. He calls on the population to step up the fight against COVID-19. We are calling on everyone to be involved in the fight against COVID-19. It is real. We must eradicate it in the environment. Administrative authorities intend to carry out, intend to carry out disinfection exercises. This time around in public structures and other highly congested areas. Well, thanks very much, more indeed. And on this very sad note, the motor remains of uh, one of Cameroon's celebrated esthetician, Madame Gunya Jacqueline, popularly known as Obama Fashion, have been removed from the morgue of the Lacantini Hospital this Friday. While well, the beauty mogul is reputed for her golden fingers in handling hairdos for prominent artists in Africa and the rest of the world. Obama Fashion died early last month after a protracted illness. And as you get the pictures on your screen, her funeral procession begins today and she's going to be laid in her native village in Banganti. We use this opportunity to see I'll extend our heartfelt condolences to the family of Obama Fashion, especially as we have all been very, very long partners in this business. The news continues with Shido Hussein.
Et dans la suite de l'actualité, avec cette note d'information et cette note d'actualité justement autour de l'alimentation au Cameroun, à la crise anglophone, à la lutte contre Boko Haram, à la guerre justement contre Boko Haram, s'ajoute désormais la Covid-19 qui ralentit les importations de vivres et intrants. Et paradoxalement, la campagne agricole 2020 affiche une production un peu en hausse par rapport à 2019. La population sous-alimentée au Cameroun est passée de 15% à 10%, soit près de 2 millions de personnes sorties de la zone de ceux qui n'ont pas assez de nourriture, laissant quand même 2 millions 700 000 en situation d'insécurité alimentaire, annonce faite hier par Gabriel Barobé, ministre de l'Agriculture et du Développement Rural. Au cours du rendez-vous biennal du cadre d'analyse diagnostique de la situation alimentaire réalisé avec le concours des partenaires internationaux au développement. Je vous propose d'écouter les projections sur la sécurité alimentaire avec des crises en perspective dans certaines régions du pays. On note que 14 départements sont en phase de crise dans les régions du nord-ouest, du sud-ouest, du littoral et du centre. Environ 2,7 millions de personnes sont en situation d'insécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle. Aucun département ne se retrouve dans les phases d'urgence ou de famine. Au cours de la période projetée de juin à août 2021, la situation alimentaire et nutritionnelle projetée sera satisfaisante dans 31 départements classés en phase minimale et 17 seront sous pression avec une situation alimentaire relativement acceptable. Par ailleurs, 10 départements dans les régions du nord-ouest, du sud-ouest et de l'extrême nord vont rester en phase de crise. Aucun département ne se retrouvera en situation d'urgence ou de famine. Disons en titre limogé ou affecté, qu'est-ce que l'on n'entend pas mis à la disposition Pascal Charlemagne Messanga Niamdi, professeur titulaire et enseignant de droit, revient sur ses concepts tout comme il fait des révélations sur son transfert à l'université de Garondéré. La part de vérité du professeur titulaire et petit cours de droit dans cet extrait sélectionné pour nous par Eringele. D'abord, je voudrais corriger quelque chose. Ce n'est pas une affectation. Je voudrais vous dire que je suis enseignant permanent à l'IRIC avec contrat à l'université de Yaoundé 2. C'est une mise à disposition en violation avec toutes les règles qui encadrent le transfert de dossiers des enseignants. Comme je suis un légaliste, républicain, membre du comité central du RDPC, dont je suis un collaborateur politique du chef de l'État, je me suis dit, mais mon Dieu, même lorsque il y a de telles erreurs administratives, parce qu'en réalité, il s'agit d'un acharnement politique, je vous dis bien acharnement politique, d'une haute personnalité, proche du chef de l'État, qui, pour des raisons d'opinion et pour des raisons de débat, dans un cadre de débat politique, qui a décidé, effectivement, euh, de me punir, de me sanctionner, de me transférer. Or, je voudrais corriger quelque chose. Je ne suis pas affecté. Affecté signifie mettre, vous envoyer, déployer, pardonnez-moi, déployer le personnel de l'enseignement supérieur au poste de même cuisinier, même de chasseur, même de doyen, recteur ou vice-recteur. Il ne s'agit pas d'une affectation, il ne s'agit même pas d'un mouvement disciplinaire. J'ai été limogé à l'IRIC, à mon poste de chef de département, c'est normal. Alors, la suite, c'est en religion. Deuxième ramadan, dans le contexte du Covid-19 en Garoundéré, sa majesté, l'amido Ayatou Issa, a renouvelé et renforcé les interdictions de l'année dernière pour stopper la propagation inquiétante de la pandémie observée ces derniers mois dans la ville de Garoundéré. Les détails avec Yasser Trezotanon et Abdoulaz Zindewa. Deuxième ramadan, dans le contexte du coronavirus. Le Lamido Ayatou Issa de Gaoundéré renouvelle et renforce les interdictions de l'année dernière pour stopper la propagation inquiétante de la pandémie observée ces derniers mois dans la ville. C'est à la suite d'une réunion avec les imams et les chefs des quartiers ainsi que les grands notables de la cour royale. Le Samaritain de Lamido de Gaoundéré a demandé à ce que la prière de Isha 
et la prière de Tarawih n'est-ce pas, ne dépasse pas 30 minutes. Et que les imams, à la fin de la prière de Tarawih, doivent faire des invocations, n'est-ce pas, de Gounout, pour que Allah le Tout-Puissant éradique, n'est-ce pas, cette pandémie de Covid-19. Concernant les négationnistes et tous ceux qui appellent au boycott au nom de la religion, le grand imam est formel. Tous les fidèles qui viennent dans qui viennent pour faire la prière dans les mosquées, n'importe quelle mosquée, il faut respecter les mesures barrières, c'est-à-dire porter les cachenets et laver les mains, et aussi respecter la distanciation, au moins un mètre. Des recommandations aussitôt validées par les autorités administratives et appliquées dans toute la région de la Damawa. Extrait out ambiant. Alors, décès, décédé justement le 1er mars 2021 à Douala, Hilary Pill, la fondatrice de l'Institut de beauté Obama Fashion, va entamer ce jour son dernier voyage pour son lieu d'inhumation, comme le voyez en image. Là, nous sommes à la morgue, donc ce vendredi matin, à la morgue de l'hôpital La Quintini de Douala. C'est bien la douleur et la tristesse qui se lisent sur les visages des enfants qu'elle a eu à encadrer durant plusieurs années et formés d'ailleurs, ils donnaient beaucoup d'emplois à ces jeunes-là. Ils sont donc venus nombreux ici à la morgue de l'hôpital à Kenshi de Douala pour assister à la levée de corps de celle qui euh, s'appelle de manière qu'ils appellent affectueusement maman. Je vous propose quelques réactions au micro de Canal 2 International. Nous sommes touchés en fait, comme on nous voyait là, c'est le terminator. Ma nous a fait ça à Dieu. En fait, on ne pouvait pas imaginer. Non, vraiment, c'est on a manque de mots. Parce que maman était une bibliothèque. Maman n'était pas juste une patronne pour moi. Pour nous, elle était une maman. Elle était une visionnaire parce que maman nous a toujours appris à travailler. Maman nous a appris à chercher, bosser. Parce que si je suis quittée d'où j'étais, sans rien, aujourd'hui, on connaît... On me connaît grâce au Bama Fashion. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes à la mort. Que vraiment, c'est avec une tristesse que euh, nous rendons comme ça un dernier hommage à Hilary Pearl au Bama Fashion. Donc, euh, c'est une chose que moi, je retiens d'elle. C'est vrai, certaines personnes vont la traiter de tout, mais moi, je, elle avait aussi ce côté maternel et amour que euh, nous autres, quand on passait le quotidien avec elle, on ne peut pas dire le contraire. Madame Hilary, une dame au grand cœur qui a travaillé pour la culture camerounaise, pour le développement euh, de la beauté au Cameroun. Et c'est vraiment triste parce que c'est une dame qui a reçu presque tous les artistes du monde entier. Mais vous voyez, à sa levée de corps, il n'y a personne qui est là. Il n'y a aucun artiste. Donc ça montre que de notre vivant, vraiment, ce sera vraiment pour nous-mêmes ou non pour les gens. Cunia Jacqueline, de son vrai nom, sera donc inhumée ce week-end du côté de Baganté. Et autre sujet dans ce journal, Arcel et Néo, le courant ne passe plus. Un clin d'œil donc à un journal. Henri Kedjan, vous ne dites pas le contraire. Of course, yes, there is tension as the general manager of the electricity sector regulatory agency has warned in Neo, that is Energy of Cameroon, to sit up and look for rapid solutions into the numerous shortcomings and abuses in the management of its customers. Jean Pascal Kou says a news action doesn't comply with Article 15 of electricity regulation in Cameroon. And so our Yaoundé Bureau Chief Correspondent Beatrice Ngamu now read through the contours of this warning letter to NAU, and this is what she fires it. Between the Electricity Sector Regulatory Agency, ASEL, and Energy of Cameroon, NAU, electricity is hanging in the air. The regulator is accusing energy distributor of abusing consumers, notably with overbillings, bills that consumers are often unable to pay, and consequently, they are abandoned in darkness. In a formal letter, From the regulator to the distributor, the former denounces many irregularities observed this far. This includes illegal acts against some of its customers regarding their consumption of electricity. 
accusing some of fraudsters for having acquired new reading methods outside their homes and offices. Though the matter has been referred to a sales reconciliation board, but NAO stopped electricity supply. The director of ASEL also deplores the directives formulated by NAO with a view of correcting these shortcomings. NAO is accused of not only complying with the public electricity distribution service law, which defines the actions that can be considered fraudulent acts. The electricity distributor is also accused of entrusting the implementation of non technical loss mitigation operations to unauthorized persons and not including bailiffs, technical experts, judicial police officers, or even sworn agents. At this, the period a cell has given a NAO to react. Three days down and five to go. Good news to the defenders of consumers who wish to see a clear line distinction in services. The producer, transporter, Distributor and regulator needs to be in real synergy for a stable electricity supply at the service of consumers who bear the bronze, especially when conflicts of any type surfaces like now. Well, thanks very much, Beatrice Ngamu, Yaoundé Bureau Chief Correspondent. Hope that NAO will set up as the energy crisis is unbearable. Now, young people have been told to take advantage of the free digital skill training in each class dweller to empower themselves and get ready for the job market. For they were given these instructions at an inch class digital training center in Dwala that was inaugurated. And amongst those who were part of this inaugural was Ambo Gladys Diva. Digital skill is a fundamental element of any competitive business model and as such, more than 80% of companies think that digital transformation is a competitive opportunity. Reason why each class, in collaboration with Simplong, are offering professional digital certification programs for young people and internally displaced to acquire competencies to become digital leaders in today's hyper-competitive economy. The training that lasts seven months and is free of charge gives opportunity to the trainees to acquire skills on building websites and software applications in preparation for the job markets. The Digital Skill Training Center, each class, was inaugurated this April 15, 2021, in Douala, Cameroon, in the presence of administrative authorities and the president of the employer's cartel, JICAM. We want this class to be, able to be very small, inch class, and very inclusive class, and helping class to the because uh, oh, we, are, we don't have any fees for the moment. Uh, we are free of charge. We just select the student from the from different, background. from different background and from the network, from the social network. The banking partner emphasized that there is no regret investing in this development initiative since it is a win-win situation for everyone involved, preparing the unemployed for the job market and skill acquisition for employees for better performance. Well, thanks very much, Ambo Gladys, and more opportunities in Bafia, this time for young people who are venturing in the grinding mill sector. But then their difficulty is energy, as there is persistent outstages. Marin D now opened up the opportunities in the grinding mill sector. Although not strange, it is usually disheartening for one's cooking plants to get frustrated by frequent electricity failure, especially at the most decisive hour. Dealers in multi-tax grinding mills fill the pains of housewives. Besides grinding mills operating through electricity, they have ones with diesel machines. The grinding mill business is fast gaining grounds in Bafia, attracting scores of youths. This woman tells me she encountered several difficulties getting a white collar job and finally ending up as a miller. I have a preparatory technique certificate good enough to fetch me a good job. Unfortunately, I could not get one. I had no choice but to embark on this business. 
business is most lucrative on Thursdays and Fridays when it is market day. The machines can grind both dry and wet products. While some of the dealers have chosen to operate in open space, others prefer small rooms, tight and hardly without any ventilation. But their interest is the money, though the airtight environment may be detrimental to their health. It's a lucrative business. Our interest is our families. The country is tough and we are suffering. The best machines cost 500,000 francs. Birds, you can have one at 250,000 francs. We work mostly on Thursdays, ever since the market was created. There are days you go home with 3,000, 4,000 or 5,000 francs safely as profit. Housewives feel relief, though they sometimes have to spend much money just to grind their products. Wonderful indeed. A network of musicians and filmmakers have thickened engagement to demystify discussions on menstruation. This was the content of a project this group forwarded to the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education in Yaoundé. And they called the project Menstru Action. Beatrice Ngamu reports. Till date, menstruation is still a myth in many households among young girls and within our society. The appearance of the first period, menstrual flow creates a kind of barrier between young girls and her parents. Cameroonian artists are determined to destroy this myth through the implementation of the project Menstrual Action, presented to the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education in Yaoundé. This initiative, Menstrual Action, taking actions for menstruation, is there to promote the menstrual hygiene management of young girls. Through training and sensitization, young girls are educated on proper healthy option to adopt. This through the voice of ambassadors like Muriel Blanche, Kares Futso, Mitumba, and Onela, female, male, and parents they are. We notice that uh, so many girls don't have the means, the financial means, to be able to pay sanitary parts. So we are here available to train them, not only on the um, sensitization part of it, that is how you need to take, your, take care of yourself during your menses, but also how they can actually manufacture washable sanitary parts and uh, sanitary parts out of banana tree and sugar cane, which will be an advantage for the environment. And the National Youth Council accompanies the initiative, initiative that has involved the Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education totally, as he was offered this campaign gadget to also champion the cause. Thanks, Beatrice Ngamo Jr. Hussein. You are taking us to the Republic of Congo, where President Sasso Nguesso will be sworn in soon. En tout cas, au 19h05, on aura en pleine formation là-dessus les juste questions de rappeler que réélu le 21 mars 2021 pour un quatrième mandat consécutif, Denis Sasson Guesso est investi ce jour à Brazzaville. La cérémonie se tient en présence de nombreux chefs d'État. Le Premier ministre John Gunte représente le chef de l'État camerounais. Vous l'avez vu tout à l'heure en image. Nous y reviendrons. Et voilà, c'est ici que se referme le trésor sur Canal 2 International. Henri Kedjan. Well, we want to thank you for having watched this edition of this bilingual news on Canal 2 International. We've been Kedjan Henry at Tembe and Junior Hussein. We want to graciously thank you and wish you a wonderful weekend.